again and welcome to what is going to be the 266th consecutive weekly program that we are so happy to call Forum for a Better Understanding. And why it is a forum is we like to get a panel of at least two or three people to talk around a theme that is of interest to both or all three of them. Now today we're taking a topic that, believe it or not, in all those years we have not quite covered. It's Catholic Sikh dialogue. And what's so interesting is that for three years in a row, there has been a national meeting of the World Sikh Council and the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. They have set up delegations to meet in various cities around Sikh Catholic conversation. As recently as May of this year, there was a meeting, and the topic that they covered was the nature of God, convergences, divergences, and spiritual paths, with an emphasis on youth outreach. So today we have two very special guests. My good friend, Dr. Mohinda Punya, who is a cardiologist and a member of the Sikh Council of Central California, who's been a guest many times on the program representing Sikh faith. And to his side is our coordinator for young adult and youth ministries for the Diocese of Fresno, Alejandro Barraza. Thank you, Alex and Mohinder, for being here today to share around something that is together, something you're going to be working on in different ways, but right now could be the beginning of a connection between Sikh and Catholic faith over youth. Mohinder, could you begin by maybe telling us a little bit about Sikh faith so that as we begin the program, we know why you're here? And then, Alex, just a little bit about your own commitment here in the diocese to youth and young adults. Mohinder. Yeah. Uh, Sikhism uh, was founded in the 15th century by its founder, uh, Guru Nanak Dev Ji. And uh, the basic tenets of Sikhism, which he uh, announced were that uh, there is only one God. So that set it apart from the Hindu religion, uh, believing in monotheism. And that all the, all the people, all the communities of the world are the children of the same God. So recognize a human race as one. And uh, Sikhism, had two major components. One is uh, spiritualism and one is social activism. Now, in order to understand the social activism part, uh, we have to go to the background history of India because that was the time uh, before that, uh, that India was being attacked time and again from the uh, neighbors from the north. And uh, Indians, by their religion, Hinduism, would not want to defend themselves because they didn't believe in shedding blood. And so it came to the point where it, it was a lot of humiliation year after year uh, on the people of India. So that's where uh, Guru Nanak, besides uh, the spiritual aspect, he advocated the social activist part that it's uh, okay to raise your voice against injustice and oppression, aggression. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it comes from uh, the very highly placed or most powerful people uh, in the country, especially the ruling elite. And uh, so he advocated that, uh, that part and spoke against it and also suffered the consequences of speaking against uh, uh, the ruling elite or the government of that, that time. He also criticized the clergy, both uh, Hindu and Islamic, which uh, kind of uh, uh, cooperated and uh, collaborated with the uh, ruling elite, uh, which were not in the interest of the general masses. They were being oppressed and uh, slighted. So Guru Nanak also uh, uh, raised his voice against uh, the uh, ruling uh, elite of, of the time and also the corruption, spoke against the corruption in the clergy uh, of the time. So, so two aspects uh, were very important to the Sikhism and uh, uh, he also uh, 
also advocated the very practical side of life that in order to reach God or in order to realize his presence, you don't need to run away to the caves or to the jungles. You can live right here and do honest living. So he, he promulgated three, uh, three things. He said, you work hard. And then you share the fruits of labor with your fellow human beings. And three, that you never forget the grace of that God Almighty. So these were the basic principles uh, which he enunciated uh, for the Sikh masses and uh, which he endeared the Sikh religion to both uh, Hindus and Muslims. And most of the followers who came to Sikhism were from Hinduism and uh, some of them were from Islam as well. Now there's about 25 million Sikhs in the world today. It's about the fifth largest world religion. And we're just so glad that Dr. Punya is here today to help us clarify some things we don't know about this very important religion, which has a lot of followers here in the valley. There's a large Sikh community. Yeah, this is a large uh, Sikh community, especially in the San Joaquin Valley. And uh, the reason being because the San Joaquin Valley and uh, uh, location of uh, Fresno and the Valley City is very much like uh, uh, the cities back in Punjab because Punjab is a, uh, is a valley like here. But again, like Sierras, we have uh, Himalayas in the, in the background. So 50 miles you go into the mountains, you get snow uh, and, and uh, very cool weather. And in the valley, uh, you use it mostly for agriculture. Wow. And uh, Punjab is compared with the, uh, like uh, California for, uh, wow. for, of India because the Punjab is called the breadbasket of India. So most of the Sikhs were in agriculture. And then, of course, as I mentioned, that they became the defenders of the country. They were in the military to defend their, uh, their fellow human beings. So uh, California, especially the valley, attracted a lot of Sikhs to this region. And uh, most of them are farmers and uh, doing, doing pretty good. They really do. Yeah. And it's a wonderful contribution to the community. Yeah. Now, Alex, from your side, why don't you introduce, for those that really are not yet knowing, your whole purpose here in youth and young adults, and maybe connecting with anything that Dr. Punya said about the particular area of ministry, uh, you're working with a lot of people similar to the community that um, Dr. Punya works with. Yes, yeah, certainly there's a lot of different um, ethnic groups within our Catholic culture here. In, um, represented in, in the valley, in the Diocese of Fresno. Uh, my job is to serve um, different parishes in um, helping them serve the different ethnicities in their parishes. As a youth ministry and young adult ministry, we seek to collaborate with pastors and parish um, leaders into a better understanding of their communities. So we train um, the leadership in how to do a more um, culturally appropriate uh, program um, and reach out to those um, members that are in their community. And um, as Doctor was saying, uh, we share a lot of the same uh, um, essences in our in both of our um, churches or religious um, faith. We believe in teaching people the quality of giving and the quality of making a difference for themselves. So that's very interesting. Okay. Very, I, I've learned a lot in this. A few minutes here. <laughs> uh -huh. Sikhism to me is a very attractive religion right off mm -hmm. the top. Now, one thing you could do is to unpack for us, Dr. Punya, uh, the famous five Ks. Because if there's one way somebody wants a primer on Sikhism, it's to get to the things you can actually handle five words. Could you tell us those five concepts and introduce us? Uh, maybe I'll mention it and you tell us how it's important. This idea of the uncut hair is a Sikh quality, and I guess they call it kesh. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it, like how important that is, why men have beards. Well, uh, I think there is a lot of uh, uh, misunderstanding about the uh, five articles of faith uh, about Sikhism. They all start with the letter K in Punjabi language, uh, like you just mentioned, kesh. Start with K, 
but in English, you hear. <laughs> okay. Eight. So, but in, in Punjabi, so case and Kanga. Kanga is the kumb. That also starts with K. So that's to keep the hair clean. And uh, Kara. They use a uh, bracelet. So uh, that was to protect and to make use of it in uh, a lot of things uh, which required uh, at that time. And uh, Kirpan. You know, uh, there's a lot of talk going on uh, with the Kirpan. About the dagger. About the dagger. Well, no, the, in the Sikh religion, we don't call it a dagger because it doesn't sound right to us. Sword. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a sword. But we, we call it a Kirpan. Now, Kirpan is a word which has two syllables. Kirpa, An. Kirpa means mercy. An means honor. That you use this uh, weapon only as a mercy, somebody oppressed and somebody downturn, he is being victimized if you have to as a last resort. And then two is mostly for women. On means honor, that you can use it when your honor is at stake. It's like uh, there was, like I said, in the background history situation, a lot of uh, robbing, raping taking place by the foreign invaders. So for us, Sword is like a kirpan that you, it is something you keep it uh, with you, but you don't, you, you use it only as a last resort. When all other means of redressing an evil have failed, raising up sword is pious and just. And that was the reason because the Indians or mostly Hindus at the time, they would not fight even to defend themselves. So as a result, the foreign invaders, they came, yeah. robbed, looted, raped, and took their women away, and they did it as a ritual every year. And Punjab was a fertile valley, five big rivers, a lot of production of uh, uh, grains and, and rice and wheat. And uh, it was a good mecca for the invaders. They'll come and rob, loot, rape, and go back. So the Sikhism said that it's not right to be passive like that. It's okay to fight when you have to defend yourself your honor, or when you have to defend somebody who is being victimized by the oppressor. So that's the significance uh, of that uh, kirpan, which uh, like a sword. But uh, the point I wanted to make is that uh, there are two things in Sikhism. One is the philosophy of Sikhism, which I just mentioned before. Now, these five Ks, they were the symbols of identity. You know, at that time, there was a, there was a fight uh, or a, a war going, going on between the invaders and, uh, and the Sikhs. Because Sikhs wanted to defend India, invaders wanted to do their things the way they used to do before, uh, but not anymore. So the guru gave uh, like a uniform, like, okay, now you have been baptized. You became a, from Sikh, from Sikh you became a Khalsa. Like after baptismal ceremony, there was a ceremony. So now you have to have a uniform, like a military has a uniform. Why well, you have to have your uh, turban, you have to, you can't cut your hair, because the other, that, that will not distinguish you, uh, distinguish you from the other um, yeah. army. Mm -hmm. So you wear this dress, and you have kara, this will help you in, in, in a, a lot of ways, and then you have kirpan, this is to, to uh, help you, and there's a, more like a short, uh, like a long short, called uh, kachara. So those were, this was the uniform. They were initially, they were living in the jungles. So they will, uh, when the invaders will come and uh, have a lot of booty uh, in their possession and they'll try to go away, the Sikhs will come from behind and, and at night or odd hours and snatch that away from them or took uh, some of the women away from them and sent to their, their, their houses where they, they belong. So this was more like a uniform and it, uh, it really doesn't have any spiritual aspect of it. It's a, it's an identity aspect that the guru wanted ho, that you wear this uniform. That means here is a man who looks like this. He stands for these principles: mm -hmm. hard work, share and care, and mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, remembrance of God Almighty. And he believes in uh, in the practical life and honest living that you will get your salvation right here in society and also to improve the society, make it better and speak against injustice. So if you follow those commands, so that will, that's the real philosophy of Sikhism. But five Ks, want to make very clear, this was a uniform. 
of his Sikh. So that anybody who sees a Sikh from a distance, he can tell, oh, he's a Sikh, and he stands for these principles. We have to take a break, unfortunately, right now. So don't go anywhere, because in one minute, we'll be back with Alejandro and Mohinder to tell us more about the efforts that we're doing between Sikhs and Christians, Catholics, to deal with youth and dealing uh, with the outreach to our younger people. Stay tuned. KNXC thanks all its loyal viewers and respected businesses who have supported your Catholic television station. Now you can support KNXT with program underwriting by having your name, your company's name, or organization associated with your favorite program. Detailed information about you or your company will appear before and after each program or day part you select. Keep the quality and spiritual message alive and make a difference. Call 559-488-7440 today or go online at knxt.tv to find out more about program underwriting on KNXT. Follow those commands. So that will that the real philosophy of Sikhism. But five Ks want to make very clear this was a uniform of a Sikh. So that anybody who sees a Sikh from a distance, he can tell, oh, he's a Sikh, and he stands for these principles. We have to take a break, unfortunately, right now. So don't go anywhere, because in one minute we'll be back with Alejandro and Mohinder to tell us more about the efforts that we're doing between Sikhs and Christians, Catholics to deal with youth and dealing uh, with the outreach to our younger people. Stay tuned. You know, we're having this very interested and spirited conversation about Sikhism, its connection possibly to uh, Catholicism because of a meeting that they've had every year. They go and meet these leaders of these two communities, uh, most recently in Columbus, Ohio in May. But right now I've got Alejandro Barraza, who is the coordinator for youth and young adults in the diocese. Alex, I wonder if you'll tell us a little bit about where it is that your effort is going in terms of getting youth engaged that might be um, an uphill battle. Because in an article a year ago in the B, they were talking about the real difficulty that the Sikh community is finding in getting younger people to even understand what their religion is all about. The idea of translation being a problem the idea of cultural barriers, the idea of the whole ritual being somehow foreign. So Alex, tell us a little bit about your efforts in your beginning your work here with the diocese to reach out to those who are probably needing to be brought in, just as um, Mohinder will tell us how the Sikh community is doing the same thing. So your chance to tell us about the Catholic work at youth. It's very um, challenging, as um, we were talking about earlier, um, the whole aspect of culture and reaching people within their own um, culture, um, not only ethnical culture, but the culture that they're living in. Um, what uh, we are finding, or I am finding as, as I move around the diocese trying to do some type of formation, is um, people are at different levels in the appreciation of the local culture that they live in. Um, Many people have migrated um, in our second generation. Many people are first generation. Many people are third, fourth, and have had a long, extensive um, experience of the United States. Um, but um, in the appreciation of, of the values and the wealth that the culture brings, um, it can hinder somebody's pastoral work 
or it can open doors uh, to to the work of, of people. Um, so certainly um, the Hispanic community um, finds challenges um, with the younger people um, as they go to a mass, because we have mass in the Catholic Church, um, and it's in um, um, another language that is not what is called the heart language of the heart of the young person. And, uh, and that's where we are, are finding um, uh, the true um, teaching to uh, people serving in youth ministry. We need to speak to the young people in the, in the way they, the young people speak to God because that's ultimately what we want to build. We want to build a relationship between the young person and God through our faith community. And that's a big part of our uh, ministry or my job is to teach people um, and give them resources on how to do that, how to, how to bring about um, the language of the heart and also uh, bring about the knowledge of their, uh, the greatness of, of our culture and the greatness of who we are as, as a people. I'm very, very, um, um, I have learned so much um, with our conversation about um, what it means, um, all these values that, um, that your, your culture uh, share of, um, of fighting and of uh, standing for one's belief and of dignity of, of the human person because ultimately it's, uh, it's because we have a dignity that we can fight for, for uh, our dignity. I mean, it's very in sync to to what we believe, yes. Mm -hmm. So Mohinder, building on, on Alejandro, where has it gone with the younger Sikh community to have them, since last year's article, enculturated to the point where they're comfortable and the older community comfortable with the younger generation? How is the generational rift going? Well, it's a very, like Alejandro was saying, it's a very challenging uh, uh, situation, not only with the Sikhs, with all the religions of the world connecting to the next generation youth. Uh, what I uh, look at it, uh, that the, these, these, uh, these days, the modern day uh, youth, they really don't want to believe whatever you tell them. They really want to question some of the things. They want to make it more open. So in talking to them, you get the feeling they want to have faith, but they don't want to have blind faith. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be told and then uh, and not, not question. So they, 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 will, they want to have faith, but not blind faith, which, uh, which is OK. Uh, so long you can rationalize what you're saying and why and convince them, I think then they come along and uh, join you. But if you just tell them that uh, you just take it from me, they're not going to take it from you. <laughs> yeah. that, that's the biggest uh, challenge we have. And, and don't you think that that's great? Because um, in my culture, we come from um, an upbringing that is very different than the young people are, are living here in the United States. Now I feel um, that we need to uh, um, equip our young people so they can stand out in, in the society and explain who they are and why they are who they are. Um, it's so pluralistic, the society that young people live, that they really need to be uh, taught the concepts and values in a way that they can own it and then, and then give witness to other people yeah. as well. Uh, Sikhism is also struggling uh, same way. Uh, that uh, we, uh, you mentioned the article in the uh, Fresno B and uh, so what we have instituted like uh, uh, that we have a, uh, running uh, uh, commentary on the on the Gurbani on the on the scriptures uh, which is with the, with the help of a projector so whatever the priest is saying so being projected on the screen and the and the young generation who are not who are not familiar with the Punjabi language so they can see and understand what is being said and that uh, uh, goes a long way for them to uh, make them uh, interested and uh, give them a good cause and reason to be there I think uh, uh, Christianity in general, and uh, they, in terms of uh, organization and reach, they have a lot more resources and a lot more prepared and organized as compared with the, uh, I think, Sikhism. But Sikhism, again, struggling with the same situation, and we're trying to find ways and means to communicate with our uh, youth 
so that they are involved because we always tell them we're not going to be here forever. So they are the ones who are the leaders of tomorrow. So they have to be involved and uh, in ways that they feel comfortable mm -hmm. uh, being involved. Sikhism being, uh, like we were discussing, such a religion, there is uh, no power with one person. We don't have a one head priest or uh, uh, the head of the religion. So the whole power is uh, vested in the general masses that you gather Sarbat Khals, what we call, call all the Sikhs and uh, let them discuss and, uh, and uh, um, discuss with each other and debate and come to a conclusion. And then the, the chosen religious leaders, they'll put that into, into writing, that that's what was decided by the whole congregation and this is the essence of it. So Sikh religion is very democratic and uh, it says that you don't need a middleman to uh, realize your God. So if you are educated enough, interested enough, you can read the uh, holy book Shri Guru Granth Sahib and you can do the same, uh, same uh, uh, part, what we call uh, the, the reading of the, of the Guru Granth Sahib and there's no difference. But if you are not interested or if you not, uh, don't want to do it, then there are designated priests who will do it for you. But you are not, uh, you are not uh, obligated to go through anybody because God doesn't need any middleman. And this Guru Granth Sahib is in the local language. So it's not a language. Before in India, the religious books were in Sanskrit. Those were the domain of the very elite people. And they were not even like to teach to other, other people in the schools because they don't want to, uh, they want to protect their turf. So Guru said, this will be in your language and you can read it and you can interpret it and you can discuss it. And then and you can live like a normal human being in the society. You don't have to go anywhere, work hard, share and care and but always remember the great gift of the God Almighty. So I think Sikhism is a very democratic, very open religion. From the turban and the beard, some people think, well, I don't know how he thinks and how they do things. But when I compare and listen to my other uh, counterparts, I find uh, Sikhism a lot more open. Yes. And uh, I sometimes wonder why. Because the Sikh religion started in the 15th century. So gurus had the advantage of, advantage of the knowledge gained yeah. over 1,500 years. Yeah. And he put into the, some principles which are very much modern. One thing I want to just put on the table because it's one of the few things I know about Sikhism is the name Singh. Everybody seems to be Singh, but it means lion. So it's such a beautiful thing to think that every man is understood as a lion. And then all the women are core, right? Right. Princess. So it's like such a dignity given to each young lady. She's a princess. And then your turban is uh, democracy in action because back in the day only the Raja could have it Maharaja. and it was like only the uppity uppities. Okay. But now every human being can have a turban and be equal. So it's such a democratizing religion, very positive in that line. I think that's, uh, you, you uh, said it well, because at the time he needed to uplift the masses, give them dignity and honor. And Singh was the name given to a Sikh because he said you are like a lion. You, if you have to, if you have to defend yourself, you can, you can do that. So that was another psychological uplift for the masses and uh, give more respect and dignity. I have to say that this has been a very, very fast little interview we had with Mohinder Punya and Alejandro Barraza. We'll be back again another time and finish it off. I just want you to know that we'll have Alex back in a couple of weeks to really explain for us at greater depth the whole effort of bringing into the community youth ministry and the young adults of our diocese. It's one of his major priorities and we're going to talk about it another time. God bless.